What does Maria Butina's plea deal mean for the Mueller investigation? Each week, the score from Bering Drift brings listeners news, reviews, and interviews. To learn more, visit BeringDrift.com. This week, the strange case of Russian national Maria Butina took another turn. Here's ABC News coverage. She's a, she's a student. She's a Russian national. She's a lover of America and of Russia, um, but she is not a Russian agent by any means. But prosecutors told a different story, claiming she was leveraging her relationship for access to the Republican elite, even coming face to face with the future president. Do you want to continue the politics of sanctions? I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin. Okay. All allegedly done at the behest of a Russian banker with close ties to the Kremlin. James Rosen, she pleaded guilty. How significant is it, and does it mean, and what does it mean for the Trump-Russia probe? I think it's significant. Um, I um, was a correspondent in Moscow some years back. I, I speak Russian. I, I know some folks in Russia, not that they know anything about any of this, but I even have cliff notes for the first time because this is, trying to follow all of this is, is, is more and more like reading a Tulsily novel. There's, there's more and more characters involved with long Russian names. Um, but I'll tell you two Russian names to keep in mind that I think Americans are gonna become more familiar with as it relates to Ms. Bettina. One of them is uh, an oligarch, his name is Konstantin, Konstantin Nikolaev, uh, and he paid for, um, a couple or a few of her trips to uh, the United States. Um, these days in Russia, if you're an oligarch, the oligarchs who were against Putin, President Putin, have either been exiled or killed. The only oligarchs left are pro-Putin oligarchs. And so um, if an oligarch is doing this, to, uh, then Putin likely knows about it. Uh, um, and then the second gentleman to uh, remember, uh, his name is Alexander Torshin. He's now the retired deputy governor of the Russian Central Bank, but at the time when this all started, about three years ago, he was the deputy governor. He was the number two leader of the Russian Central Bank. The Russian Central Bank is extremely powerful. Um, it's, it's very close to uh, President Putin uh, and other top Russian officials because it controls so much money. And he was, um, he was also involved with her. And I think that she, she uh, the, the FBI has been uh, allegedly investigating him for all kinds of possible uh, shenanigans, separate from Trump, since 2013. So they've been all over him. And um, I think that she, she reportedly had ties with um, officials who worked for the FSB. That's the successor agency to the KGB. It's the highest uh, Russian spy agency. She had contacts with them. And um, this all started when she was 27 years old. Her multiple types of outreach to, um, to, to, to introduce Russian, senior Russian officials to senior Republican officials, the NRA and senior Republican officials. And I just don't believe that a 27-year-old Russian um, girl, young woman, uh, as attractive as she might be, mm -hmm. um, can be doing all of that solo. I just, I just don't think it's true. The last thing I'll say is that Mr. Torshin, the deputy governor of the central bank, um, financed and ran exchanges where he sent young Russians to the United States, ostensibly on student exchanges. But it's coming out now that really what he was doing was he was recruiting future, he was using these exchanges to recruit future Russian spies. So, uh, so, so there's a, there's a, to say there's a lot of smoke here is, is an understatement. There's, there's uh, flaming smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Schindler with Young Voices. How significant is this, and what does it mean for the sure. Trump? Sure. So as far as I know, the most that she did was facilitate communication between uh, the Trump campaign and Trump's inner circle with Russian government officials. That in of itself isn't that bad. It's important for, um, uh, for political actors to be in constant communication w with each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I do see a lot of people like sort of saying, oh, there's tons of smoke here. There must be fire. There must be collusion. Um, but everything I learn about um, uh, Alec Maria Alec and what she's sort of done while in America, it gets, it gets sort of goofy. She's hanging out with um, uh, like Republican officials singing Beauty and the Beast at like Moscow karaoke bars. Like she's just a character out of James Bond and more out of Seinfeld. So, um, I wouldn't be too worried. <laughs> That's a perfect cover for a spy. Yeah, great cover. Graduate student uh, at American Pink University. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, American University. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I, I'm wondering about what happens to her. Uh, presumably, she's going to prison. Am I right? At some point, am I right? I think that's the assumption. Right, okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm curious what happens to her after her term is up. I mean, does the United States deport her and she goes back to Russia? And there's been talk that she really can't go back to Russia. Why? Because she goes back there, she might end up at the bottom of a river somewhere. You know, a little poison. There you go, suit. poison. There yeah. you go, poison. That's right. That's what I forgot. The Russian is, is, is into this poison thing. Yeah, that's right. They've you got know. it down. That's right. Got damn pat. I noticed. You know, talk to other people in other countries, and so I, you know, and there's been talk that um, she may just end up just staying in the United States. You know, well, well, one thing that's significant, and I neglected to say, is that she pled guilty to conspiracy. Right. And this, conspiracy. Yes, and that's this is the first time that, um, and, and you were saying that that you know he, she was merely in contact, trying to merely in contact, trying to facilitate kind of friendly exchanges. But the, the the key issue is what was she in contact with them about? And she was in contact with the Russians and the um, it, over an alleged attempt to influence the 2016 election. That's what she was in contact with them about, and so it, that's what matters. It's, it's not it's not just the contact; it's the nature of the mm. contact. Um, and what about this boyfriend that she's been with, um, Paul Erickson, I believe his name is. He uh, uh, apparently has a bit of a shady past himself. While serving as the national treasurer for Yale's chapter of college Republicans, Eric started a friendship with Jack Abramoff, a notoriously corrupt lobbyist. So he seems to be a little suspect. Yeah, um, I think there are this whole circle of people, uh, Americans and Russians, are kind of having a contest, uh, kind of a race to the bottom. Um, you know, who can be more suspicious? <laughs> Does it, it's, not, it's, it's not guilty, it can't be proven guilt in the court of law yet. But mm -hmm. All right, we'll see where um, this goes. Do you have a final comment? Oh, I don't think, that, like, like, the fact of William uh, being associated with Jack Abramoff, I don't think is too damning, considering that Jack Abramoff had a very, very extensive ties. And if he was um, merely like a Yale um, uh, like, like functionary, like as a student, like, it, could, uh, it could seem odd to damn him for just, um, uh, you know, being friends with a powerful like, lobbyist. <clears throat> well, I didn't know if it spoke to his character. Mm. And all finally, right, that's all for this week. I'm Heather Godwin, and thanks for watching The Square Circle. We'll see you next week. Ooh.